Welcome to the Steady On Stronger Together podcast. I am your host, Angie Ballman. Sarah De Orlando is my guest this week, and she is joining me to talk about the way God met and changed her during a time when her work as an engineer took her to Poland. In that new place, Sarah experienced feelings of being emotionally lost, but God reached out to her and set her feet on a path of healing and deep connection with him. I've felt lost before. I bet you have too. God meets us in our own Poland time and time again. And if you're looking around your life today and wondering how where you are is going to turn into something for which you are grateful, I hope you'll listen to Sarah's story. Because the God who caught up with her in Poland is the God who will catch up with you wherever you are too. Let's listen in. Hello, Steady On community, and welcome to this Stronger Together conversation. I'm Angie Bauman, and with me today is my guest, Sarah De Orlando. Sarah, welcome to the Steady On community. Thank you for your time today. Oh, thank you, Angie, for inviting me. It's an honor to be with you. I'm delighted to chat with you. Sarah is the founder of Sarah De Orlando Coaching. Talk to us a little bit. I read that what your coaching really focuses on is helping women overcome what's holding them back, right? Talk to us a little yes. bit about your coaching, if you will. Yes. So I love to step in and help women get unstuck using biblical truth. And a lot of times our um, fears and limiting beliefs and lies that we believe the enemy keeps us living small. And I get in there and I speak truth and encouragement, give a fresh perspective and help women take those brave steps to live out this life that God has for them and whatever that looks like for them. So they can have that thriving, abundant life. I love that. You know, a lot of times when people ask me like, what is the steady, steady on ministry about? I will say it is about recognizing the lies we believe, the places we're stuck and finding biblical mm. application to help us move forward. So I feel like we are connected spirits in terms of what the Lord has taught us and what we hope to in turn, just encourage other people with. So I'm delighted to spend this yeah. time with you. Sarah is a story writer, an adventurer, a nature lover. And I have to tell you, that's kind of where our similarities end just a little bit because I am not an outside girl. Although the Lord has taught me over the last couple of years, he's just brought a real deep appreciation for nature and for his creation mm -hmm. into my life. But I will say that has been learned, not natural. So, <laughs> and you're also a wife and a mother and your book is yeah love letters from Poland. And so will you talk to us just a little bit about this title? How did you find yourself? First of all, just how did you find yourself in Poland? What life circumstances mm -hmm. took you uh, to begin this journey? Mm, okay. Where to begin on that question? <laughs> so love letters from Poland. It is a journey about finding real love. Mm -hmm. And I came to Poland because I was trying to hit certain targets for my engineering career. I wanted to have certain accolades. I wanted to make good money and pay off debt. And this opportunity just fell into my lap. And honestly, I, I never wanted to go to Poland until this opportunity came up. And even when it did come up, I thought, who who likes Poland? Like it's kind of a who um, goes to Poland? For, forgotten place. It's not Italy. <laughs> it's not France. It's not, you know, these other... Yeah. Um, beautiful, alluring Western European countries. It was just kind of like, oh, I think I could go. And God made it very clear that I was meant to go. Mm. Um, and at that time I had been growing a lot spiritually on my own, but I wasn't connected with a good church community um, that shared um, the deep convictions that God had placed in my heart to find healing and freedom. I always suffered with depression and so when I went to Poland, you know, I brought my depression with me, with my anxiety, my husband and I were married at the time, but we decided that we could be okay living apart for those eight months while I was in Poland. And so when I got to Poland, it was this culture shock, really. I didn't have much expectation for what it would be like, but it wasn't what I had expected. I don't know what I had thought it would be, but it was just very hard and lonely and so I struggled for those first six weeks or so, really doubting who I was, feeling unsafe, um, not unsafe, feeling insecure mm -hmm. and unseen mm -hmm. because I didn't have any 
really good friends around me. We were all practically strangers. Um, and I had a lot of alone time yeah. and I typically didn't like being alone by myself and getting wrapped up in my thoughts. Um, so it led me to this turning point where I decided I could either lean in to the nudges that God had for me there and start to do my own, um, Bible studies and podcasts and disconnect from social media where I felt like I would be connected, you know, quote unquote, with people back in the States if I'm on Facebook all the time. Um, so I, I cut those things off and just leaned in to taking walks in nature, um, meditating on a podcast and just journaling about it afterward, and just letting it really soak in. And meanwhile, also like carrying my Bible around to local coffee shops and just like praying that somebody would notice and say, Hey, we have a church. Come, come join us. And did that happen? Um, not quite, <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Um, but I had a friend that just did a Google search. Like I thought I had Googled everything up and down and found nothing. My friend gets back from her honeymoon and was like, here's a church you might want to check out. And it was, it was perfect. Okay. And as soon as I opened that email, I was at work and the backstory is that I, you know, I'm an engineer. I was working on a U.S. military base that okay. um, Poland had used throughout the world wars. And so it was just a really ragged place with a lot of dark history from, you know, Hitler using it and all of this devastation and weightiness. Um, but as soon as I opened that email, I looked out and there's this most glorious double rainbow over the airfield. And I knew that something was going to happen, mm -hmm. something good. And God like specifically had given that to me. I love that. I, my brain is going in several directions because I want to circle back <laughs> to a couple of things that you said. Uh, the first one, I just, as I'm listening to you talk, I hear just the word time is in my mm -hmm. mind because when you mm -hmm. said, you know, I disconnected from some of these things and I focused on some of these other things and I took my Bible to a coffee shop and I journaled about a podcast. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've listened to a podcast, right. In almost like in a passive way, right. Yeah. It's, it's on while I'm doing something else. I'm receiving information mm -hmm. and there's nuggets of truth in there. Some of them even make me pause and say, that's good stuff. You know? Yeah. I should remember that, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. I, but I don't, right. Because, and, and, and mm -hmm. there, there are things like that all the time in our lives. I think whether it's nature, whether it's something mm -hmm. kind of information that's coming that because I, and I will say we just as a culture tend yeah. to over schedule and be too busy and we're multitasking mm -hmm. and all that, that we miss so much about what the Lord wants to do in our lives. And I feel like just listening to you talk the little bit that you've shared already, the, the gift of Poland was so much about this ability to focus on him. Mm. I mean, that's what I hear you saying with it. Yes. Is that accurate? You think? Absolutely. Yeah. Angie. Yeah. And so, and, and we all have, we all have these choices, right? Every day we have choices mm. to say no to other things, but I find myself so often with this question of why do I feel so far from you? And I feel mm. like his, he lovingly says, sweetheart, it's because you're trying to fill, you know, 20, six hours of things in a 10 hour day for you really, you know, I mean, and, and, yeah. and because, and I, and you don't leave room for me and I hate it that I fall back into that all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I just hear, I hear that is such a gift that he gave you, even though I'm confident that it was really hard, especially at first when you don't have your feet under you and like, what am I doing here? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know that um, some things begin to happen inside you then. You write about this, right? Um, that yeah. kind of made the woman who left for Poland uh, quite different than the one who came back to the States from Poland. So would you talk just a little mm -hmm. bit about that change? What did that feel like inside you and mm -hmm. what kind of happened as he began to work on your heart? Mm -hmm. As I got plugged into that community, that church, and on top of my own study and walks in the forest, the Lord was really showing me that he saw me and that he wanted to spend time with me and delight in me and love me. And that's why like love is such a huge theme of this and of my entire story, really, because until Poland, I believe that God loved me out of obligation or even possibly, um, yeah, it just loved me out of obligation, honestly. 
And when I got there and found these unique gifts specifically for me, like I love sea glass and he gave me so much sea glass. I came back from Poland with gallon bags full of sea glass. And now I get to give it away to people when they buy my book. And it's such a beautiful reminder. But as I was there, when I realized that he really did love me and I had this moment of saying yes to him and sharing my testimony within two weeks of joining my new church community. And I found so much freedom being able to share to an audience of, you know, 30 to 50 people that didn't know me. And yet they didn't turn away. They leaned in, they gave me hugs and were crying with me and had that compassion. And I realized then that I had a story to share Mm. and that gave me encouragement. That was a real turning point in my time and gave me um, a glimpse at my purpose for what God had for me. It wasn't just about me being an engineer and making money, having a family, you know, kind of following along the American dream, but there was something more. And that was a really powerful shift and made me want to say, God, I think that you can heal me from depression. And so that was started to become a very, very specific prayer. And within a week, um, it, it miraculously left me. Um, in one moment from head to toe, my, my body was just tingling and God, I just felt God's love pour inside of me. Um, and I knew it was gone. And one of the pastors, pastor Allah was saying, and now you will learn to trust God. And at, at the time I thought it was a really weird thing to say for being healing, healed from depression. But I realized that so much of my hope was stolen because I didn't know the father's love. I couldn't trust the father's love. Yes. Yes. For me. Trust is such an issue in my life too, in all of our lives. I think if we really look at, you know, the, at the core of why we do the things we do, it's because when God says, I love you, we say something like you said, well, that may be true, but it's out of obligation. It's because you love the world and I'm in the world, but that's very different than feeling like, you know, me, you see me, you love me. You respond mm-hmm. to this, Sarah, this Angie, the one that deals with depression, the one that deals with being overscheduled, the one who struggles yeah. to, uh, to believe that you can heal from things that are old. Right. You know, and, and mm-hmm. to, to really know me is very different than, as you said, I think that's, it's beautiful to say, I felt like he loved me out of obligation. I think that's beautifully honest. I think a lot mm-hmm. of us could, can relate to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I hear in your church family, the support, correct me if I'm wrong in this, there's something also very beautiful about being able to say, this is where I am right now. Yeah. And to, to, to experience that being heard and welcomed and affirmed. I think mm-hmm. so often I'd like your feedback on this. I think so often in our faith communities, we're supposed to have a before and after story, right? This is yeah. what happened before and now I'm better. And this is what, but to be able to be in a faith community where you say, I'm just mm-hmm. experiencing this right now. And I don't know the end. I can't paint it done. If you will, mm-hmm. what a gift that is. It was really freeing. That was the first mm-hmm. time that I had really noticed that and been able to show up with my struggles, with my stress, even though I was healed from depression, you know, I still had hard days and back to that time Being able to trust that God's time is so slow for healing and his work. And it's not about rushing to the end, but leaning in and enjoying those moments or having those feelings and and experiencing them and being okay with that. I love that. Not about rushing to the end. I'm bad about that. I just, just tell me where we're going and then we can be done with this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it's still a struggle Today, coming back to the States, you know, five years later, finding a community of women, I lead a Bible study and showing up and being vulnerable to them and not putting on this facade, like I'm a life coach, I'm the leader, I have to have it all together, I can't share these struggles. And those are complete lies that prevent me from connecting with other believers and receiving that love and comfort that God gives them to to share with me. Hey, Steady On friends, I'm cutting in right here to let you know I am hosting a free virtual retreat coming up on September 24 and 25, and I'd like you to consider this your personal invitation to join me for the event. Through the two days, we will be camping on Psalm 139 and learning more about how we are known and loved by God. 
Special guests are going to include Heather Dixon, Robin W. Pearson, Talisi Guerra, and Cheryl Shoemake, all of whom are friends of this podcast and voices that may be familiar to you. There will be an option to watch either live with me and other guests or with self-paced videos that may better match the needs of your schedule, or you can do a little of both, whatever works best for you. The registration link is in today's show notes. And again, the entire event is free. I hope you'll take a second and learn more about it because I would love to study with you. It's hard for us to need something from other people. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, because then we run the risk also that we might not get, like we might put ourselves out there and then their answer is no, or I I believe the lie or I get scared about Mm -hmm. the idea that maybe if I if I share with you what I really need, or if I tell you what's really going on inside, that's just mm-hmm. going to be too much. And you're going to say that's yeah. just too much. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's talk. Hard. Yeah. So let's talk about those hard days still, mm-hmm. because I love, I love the freedom that I hear in your voice about the Lord, mm-hmm. you know, healing you from depression. What mm-hmm. I know immediately is some people are like, well, why did he heal for her from depression? And why doesn't he heal me yeah. from depression? Right. And so I want to, mm-hmm. I want to poke on that just a little bit. Yep. Because I'm confident that you still, Mm -hmm. like you just said, you shared, you still have some bad days. Mm -hmm. What's different now? Why do you Mm -hmm. say that you're healed and you still have bad days? Can I say it that way? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, so what, because I I see, I sense this, this confidence or this trust in a Mm -hmm. shift in you. What's that about? I think it really boils down to knowing the voice of God better. Okay. And so I can see him now in the valleys, you know, before Poland, I would struggle with depression alone and feel like it was an, a list of things I needed to do to heal versus just going to God and bringing him these feelings and these struggles, um, and leaning into those hard days and sharing with my husband, sharing with a friend, having, you know, I still see a therapist and work through depression, um, As soon as I came back from Poland, it was one of the darkest seasons of my life. And so I fell back in the pit. Wow. And I think it was this mountaintop high and similar to the story of Elijah, you know, he was battling all of these false prophets and then he, you know, ended up in a desert and was, God was like, you know, what's the point, God, just take my life. And when I came back to the States and was removed from that really supportive environment, I had my husband back, but just the, I felt like I couldn't sense God's presence anymore. There's a really dark season that God was solidifying the things he had taught me in my heart. Um, so I could have deeper insight when I wrote, but in that, in that moment, I would just read verses and be like this false flat, but God, I know what you did in Poland. Mm -hmm. Now I know that this happened, um, in five years now, like, you know, five years in the past, I thought, Poland was the best part of my life. It would only kind of maybe peter along Mm -hmm. plateau, but it would never be better than that. Um, And that was a lie too. Mm -hmm. And so there's, I think the the growth process and finding freedom from whatever you're struggling with, whether it's some kind of depression, anxiety, addiction, or, um, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. that, that thorn in your side is. I think God is so patient with us in the struggle. Um, And most recently I lost my dad last year unexpectedly and that threw me in another pit and it was, it was really dark, but I was so grateful for the comfort that I found with Jesus, like the verses in Psalm 91 and, and, and being grateful for this hard season. So I could, lean in and know his voice even more, know his love even more um, with a hope to share it with others and have compassion and be able to meet people in their suffering. Yeah. I hear a couple of things in that. And thank you for being willing to share that because I know that raised Mm -hmm. some, you know, questions in people because healing is such a journey. And we, we have Mm -hmm. these moments, I think, where we have breakthroughs and we can, maybe we draw a line in the sand and we know we don't ever have to go exactly back there, but those things don't Mm -hmm. just magically disappear, you know, and, and, and I go back to what Mm -hmm. you just referred to. It's in second Corinthians, right? Where Paul says, I begged him three times. I pleaded Mm -hmm. with him to take this away from me. And his answer was right. 
my grace is sufficient for this for mm-hmm. you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And so that's an answer sometimes too. But what I hear you saying is that healing, a big part of the healing is I know what to do now. Like, right. Yeah. When I feel this way, mm-hmm. I remember to remember I remember yes. Poland and I remember how he touched my heart there. And I remember mm-hmm. how good that was and how he showed his love. And because mm-hmm. of that, I don't feel maybe as desperate or as hopeless, mm-hmm. or we can speak to the lie when it mm-hmm. creeps back in. Yeah. And I appreciate what yeah. you're saying too, about the, the darkness that came when you got home, because mm-hmm. my belief is, I, I don't think I believe this. I think I know this, that after a spiritual high, if you will, Mm -hmm. is one of the times the enemy is prowling. So like Mm -hmm. if he can get us like on that, you know, after that, there's this, there's some kind of gap or space or Mm -hmm. something when we've had a really close connection to God. And then he wants to get right in there and try to Mm -hmm. take any lasting joy from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And make us doubt that it ever happened. Yes. Yes. There was that wrestling for mm-hmm. sure. And writing it helped me remember. Good. So writing your story, whether it's just for your own sake, or if you want to share that provided a lot of healing. Yeah. Your story, your book is filled with scripture. And, um, mm. I know one I picked up on, there may be others. I picked the, I picked up on this one that meant a lot to you, but I don't, you said, you already said Psalm 91. And so there may be others. Mm-hmm. I want you to talk about maybe whichever one that you want to, or a couple of them, I picked up on Romans 15, 13. And I wondered Mm -hmm. if you would tell us what does that verse say? And why does it mean something to you? Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him Mm -hmm. so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy spirit. There are so many things that I could park on in that verse. And it's my verse for the year. Okay. Because God is reminding me to hope again okay. and to hope that there is more to know about him, more to experience, more joy, more peace. And it begins with that trust, trusting his heart, knowing his heart. Um, and that's been really impactful for me in this last year. And the point of me sharing my story is to give hope. Mm. You know, if God is working in my life and wants to have a personal relationship, he also wants a personal relationship with you in a unique way, the way that you connect with him most. If it's not nature walks or hikes, right. you know, there's something else that grabs your attention. And if you get still and tune into that, now he wants to meet you. So I absolutely um, love sharing that hope and giving people um the place, an invitation to seek God and let him step in like a really personal, personal way. And also another huge verse for me in Poland while I was there was Psalm 40. And it talks about how he lifted me up out of the pit and the mud and the mire and set my feet on a rock, gave me a firm place to stand and put a new song in my mouth. Um, And that was the first time that I'd really had hope for my story and felt that there was purpose behind the suffering because I had a lot of childhood trauma and abuse and struggled with depression, um, even probably as a a child, but didn't know, you know, how to label it or how to get help. So there was just so much discouragement and searching for meaning, searching for purpose um, and believing that I was truly unlovable and just kind of bumping along and good, a good little girl because I got good grades and did okay but um knowing that he saw me in this pit and knew that it would be used for good yeah and instead turned it on its head you know the suffering like um there's a lyric that or even Joseph's story it's like what what you meant for evil God meant for good yeah you're, you're killing me quoting my favorite verses back to me. I tell you, <laughs> it's no, it's great. Uh, Psalm 40 verse two is the, yes. min, is the, is the steady on ministry verse. He, in the NLT, oh, it says, God. yeah, he set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along is how it's, is how it's phrased in the mm. NLT. And, uh, that's what I most desire 
Well, that's what I most desire because also I have uh, childhood abuse and trauma in my background mm -hmm. and I can feel like a, uh, so my kids always laugh at me because you maybe have seen these. So a lot of times outside of a retail place or a car lot or something, there'll be mm -hmm. this like pencil plastic guy that's attached to a fan at the bottom. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. Like yeah. The fluffy well, arms. Yeah. yeah so the fluffy, <laughs> and I always say like, when I'm like, that's me, right? Flailing, but firmly grounded. Mm -hmm. Like that's, <laughs> and that's how I feel. <laughs> sometimes, but when I get all flailing, like I know, I know mm. the thing that I can go back to, right. Are the promises mm. of the Lord, his affirmation of me, his goodness that lives inside of me, his power, which means I don't yeah. have to have all the answers or know how to do it on my own. And when mm. I remember that it steadies me and, mm. um, and I get unsteady it's too, way too easy for my liking, but it's like mm. what you were talking about healing. That's a healing process. I always awesome. say as we mature spiritually, it doesn't mean we get it right all the time, but it means we, we, we quicker, right? We recognize quicker when we've gotten off yes. track and we know <laughs> faster what to run back to. So we get back on and that's maturing, not having yeah. all the right answers because word, I'm not going to ever have all the right answers. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those mm -hmm. are beautiful verses. So let me ask this question yeah. because you've talked about trust several times. Mm -hmm. how do you grow your trust in the Lord? What does that look like for Sarah? When, when you mm -hmm. recognize, right. That, that I'm struggling today, I'm trying to do mm -hmm. it myself. I don't want to put words in your mm -hmm. mouth, but the kinds of things that I imagine, mm -hmm. you know, might be happening, or I'm trying mm -hmm. to, I'm trying to show that I have it all together. And I, inside, I feel insecure. What, what, what does that yeah. look like for you when you recognize it, how you, how you increase your trust in him? It usually starts with getting still. I will feel anxiousness and just like this pressure that I need to do something. And that's an invitation for the Lord from the Lord for me to be honest with how I'm feeling, whatever I'm worrying about. And it might be a conversation. It might be just crying or journaling something. And then I'm like, God, what are you going to do about this? Um, when I was grieving my, my dad recently, I was up in the mountains at a women's retreat and had some quiet time in the morning. And I just was frustrated. You know, he passed away at 60 and it seemed like there was so much restoration to be done because we had a broken relationship and it didn't happen. And because I just put all these feelings out and God, like, let me, he, want, he wanted me to, invited me to, I, I ended the prayer with God. I, I need something from you today. Something special that shows me that you delight in me. Mm. Um, and that day I met my new friend from Poland, like at a women's retreat in California. And we had similar, but mirror stories. She came to the U S for healing and I went to Poland for healing and it, it can only have been from the Lord. So building trust looks like being honest with him and then asking specific prayers or saying, I need hope for my marriage right now. We we're struggling and I need you to see that you see me and looking at it day by day and saying, like, how, how can you delight me today? How can I know that you see me? And it might be a message from a friend. Um, and I notice those things and I take them personally. Yeah. Um, most recently I've been collecting heart rocks. And right before my dad passed away, they started showing up on the beaches here. And now I have a jar full of them and even heart leaves. And last night it turned into a heart pizza dough. And it's just like, you're being great. Like you're, you're going over the top Lord. Um, but it's showing me those intimate ways that he knows me. And so I can start to trust him more because how can you trust somebody that you don't know? Right. Yes. I think that's so true. And, and asking for what you need, but also then keeping your heart open to it, because I think so often mm -hmm. it doesn't show up in the specific way, or <laughs> like you said, I don't know what I was yeah. expecting, but it wasn't that right. Sometimes we have expectations mm -hmm. of how he'll demonstrate his love. And when mm -hmm. we get caught up in the way we think it needs to be, then we miss the way it is because he is mm -hmm. showing us all the time. It's funny that you say that about the hearts because it's, it's sometimes it's the littlest things like that for me 
maybe because mm-hmm. I'm too time focused whenever. So my birthday is April 21st. And mm-hmm. whenever the clock is 421, I don't know why <laughs> it just feels like a love note oh. from God. Like it does. And mm-hmm. I can't tell you almost every day. I also do it with when it's 1234, 1234. Yeah. I don't know why it's just this crazy <laughs> thing, but it's just, when I see the clock with those numbers on it, it just mm-hmm. feels like a reminder, like I'm in your day. I see you. Mm. And, I, and so often I glance at the clock when it's those numbers. And I think <laughs> that's not, and it's crazy, and, yes. but it's not to me because it reminds mm. me to remember, you know, like mm-hmm. it's just a reset kind of thing for me. Like, oh yeah, get out of your head and remember whose you are. And it just helps yeah. me. So I just encourage anyone listening, like, what is that thing for you at, you know, as you, as you look around, it could be a certain kind of bird or a tree, or I don't know, just anything. It can be a certain, it can, I, it can be anything that just like reminds you that God does Mm -hmm. see you and wants to be a part of your day. This has been so encouraging and delightful before I let you go, just so you guys know, it's one, two, three, four on my computer screen right now. It's 1234 (laughs) as we're recording. I can't make this stuff up. Um, you but cannot make it up. Before I let you go, <laughs> this is the question I always end on because I love to share resources. What are you, anything mm. goes, reading, listening to, mm-hmm. music, podcasts, studies, books, mm-hmm. anything at all that's bringing you joy or keeping you connected to God? You know, as I was reading these questions earlier, I was really wrestling with this because I do love to consume and like meditate on things, but I've noticed lately that. I cannot listen to as much that I want to without half listening. Like and then we, that makes we were me saying more that, anxious. Yeah, we were yeah. saying that earlier, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. how, mm-hmm, I hear you. Mm-hmm. So to be completely honest, the way I feel most connected with God is getting out and going on a hike and I listen to music or sometimes I just listen to nature. I love and that. And that's just how my heart is and it delights me. Um I do really love music. I love singing God's word over my life, even when I don't feel it. Something about the music and like um, the crescendos and just like the building of that. It just feels like it raises my spirit, lifts my spirit. Yes. Um, and there's some really popular songs like my my daughter's three and we love Raise a Hallelujah. We oh, sing yes. that Raise Good a Hallelujah mm-hmm. all the time. It's super cute to hear her sing that. I bet. Audiobooks. Corey Ten Boom. Mm. I have loved going and hearing this powerful story of suffering and yet full of God's hope and full of ways that he stepped in and provided miracles and provision and encouragement, courage to do these hard things. And then how her life as she was released from um, the camp became a uh, essentially an evangelist and shared her story and traveled and gave encouragement. So I love hearing stories about other people, especially um, strong women of faith yes. and stepping out and hearing their stories because we can get encouragement and say like, Oh, if God, God saw her, he can see me and he can meet me in my unique circumstances. Yes. yes. Yeah. For sure. Which is why it's so powerful to share our stories and mm-hmm. why I'm so grateful for you sharing yours because it, it is, it, it, it matters. It matters for mm-hmm. us to be able to say, this is how God showed me that he sees me. If I say that right, he showed mm-hmm. me that he sees me and he won't show you the same way. You may not be in Poland. It may not be yep. nature walks, right? But yep. if you open yourself up to it, he will show mm-hmm. you that he sees you also. Sarah's book is Love Letters from Poland, and it is a treasure, and you are a treasure, and we just really, really appreciate you sharing these pieces of your story and your heart and your testimony with us today, Sarah. Thank you so much for being with us. We are going to sign off, and until next time, peace. For me, and I think for many people, healing is a process, and a big part of that process is learning to more fully trust in Jesus. It's not about, as Sarah said, rushing to get to the end. It's about taking deliberate steps day by day and remembering we do know what to do. When our surroundings seem unfamiliar and our emotions are swirling around us, we do know what to do. We must move our eyes from the things that ask us to be afraid to the one who reminds us we don't need to be afraid. 
because He is with us. If you haven't already, I hope you'll subscribe to the Steady On podcast today. When you're subscribed, you'll automatically see the new episodes plus any bonus material. Thank you so much for listening. I pray wherever your day takes you, you are walking in the confident knowledge that you are a beloved, cherished child of God. Peace.